Kenny, you ready for game time? Join me, Sal from Behind Eric Basketball, as I announce play-by-play. -play. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe, because now we're about to go live. Entering the pregame, we now present Sal from Behind Eric Basketball. And what's good, everyone? Welcome back in once again, and here we are, the final Sweet 16 game of the night. So should be a good one here, the Duke Blue Devils. Number four seed going to take on the Houston Cougars. This team game taking place out in Dallas, Texas. Houston the favorite by four and a half points on the line over under at 134 and a half. And what has been projected as more of a defensive game in this matchup. Projected on the line for this one. If you guys are new to the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. As we're about to tip off in around nine and a half minutes from now. Jared McCain, he dropped down 30 points in the second round. That's the second most by a Duke freshman in an NCAA tournament game as Duke destroyed James Madison in a round of two. Emmanuel Sharp had a career-high 30 for Houston on seven made threes in the overtime victory over Texas A&M on Sunday night. Jason Bryce, Vegas, I want more cash in the street. Welcome in. Glad to have you all back into the channel once again. And yeah, this is a 1983 rematch. Um... If Houston's able to take on the NC State, a winner of this game will take on the NC State. So, uh... NC State pulling off the upset win over Marquette. Houston looking for that 1983 title game rematch where NC State won over Houston in the 83 title game. And then for Duke, they're looking to take on their in-state rival, NC State, which NC State beat Duke in the ACC tournament 74-69. Duke this season is 1-1. Against NC State. They only played two games this season. And both of those games were played in the month of March. Where Duke won on the road at N NC State 79-64. And then NC State beat Duke on March 14th 74-69 in the ACC tournament. So yeah this is a huge matchup here. Duke last year got knocked out in the second round of the tournament because they lost against Tennessee in the physicality in round two from 2023. Are they up for the challenge and the most physical team in the nation with a number one seed, the Houston Cougars tonight? That is the question. Kyle Filipowski came back for a reason for Duke, and he's going to have to show it big time in this matchup. Um, Duke here coming off back-to-back -back wins over mid-majors to get to the Sweet 16. They beat the 13th seed Vermont in the first round, 64-47. 
and they beat James Madison the 12 seed 93 to 55. They had an incredible game against James Madison, shredded James Madison, which James Madison upset Wisconsin in the first rounds. And uh, Duke looks like they have hit their stride at the right time. They have yet to find that signature win against a one or a two seed this season. They find themselves against a one seed here in the Sweet 16. Now's the time for the Duke Blue Devils, the biggest game of the season, to stay alive in a single game elimination if they want to do it tonight. They get swept against UNC in the regular season. They lost against Arizona back in November at Cameron Indoor. They're 0-3 against either one or two seeds that were in the bracket. And tonight, they take on the one seed, the Houston Cougars. 32-4 overall this season. They shredded Longwood by 40, the 16 seed, 86 to 46. They got put up against the 9 seed Texas A&M, which forced Houston into multiple players falling out. Houston should have lost that game on Sunday as they allowed Texas A&M with a with a 10 minute with a 10 point lead with 2 minutes left to go. Texas A&M crawled back into the game forced overtime against Houston. Texas A&M drilled a game tying 3. Uh, with a second remaining forced OT. And I, I cannot believe that Houston won that game. They had multiple players foul outs. They had Jamal Shedd in overtime foul outs. And somehow, some way, they found themselves to victory. And that's what champions need. You got a team like Houston, number one defense in college, shoots and fewest points allowed, allowing 56 points per game to opponents. You get to tap into that championship identity and the next man up on a shorthanded squad this season for the Cougars, building an incredible culture around their program. And these guys are just believing upon themselves. They faced a super physical Texas A&M team that no way did not play like a nine seed in that game on Sunday, except at the free throw line. That's what cost Texas A&M. They should have won that game, except uh, free throws, they missed a bunch, but they were super physical. They matched the physicality of Houston. The question tonight, can Duke do that? They've been um, just lacking those top-notch signature wins for Duke. Can they rise up to the challenge against the big bad boy Houston Cougars in a game taking place in Dallas, Texas tonight as we will tip off in around five minutes from now. Uh, Smitza, welcome back in. Thanks for joining in. Good pupper on the stream. We got Bryce. Welcome back in the channel. And uh, if you guys are doing a stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. A lot of good guards for this matchup for the Houston Cougars. Jamal Shedd leads the team. He averages 13 points per game, over 6 assists per game this season. A really fast guard, controls pace, controls tempo, blow by speed. He does not turn over the basketball often. Houston as a team is top 15 in the nation and fewest turnovers per game. LJ Cryer, a transfer from Baylor, excellent perimeter threat for the Cougars. And then Emmanuel Sharps co coming off a career high 30. For Houston and the win over Texas A&M. Uh, they are undersized in the front court. But they can rebound the heck out of the basketball. They're top 10 in the nation in offensive rebounds. If they're hitting their shots. Then they're going to win this game for Houston. Because you know that they're going to put together defensive stops. I would imagine. Even though they gave up 96 to Texas A&M. Texas A&M have been putting in the points. The past two weeks leading up to the tournament. Duke was putting in the points against James Madison. 93 to 55, but they faced two mid majors, a 13 and a 12 seed on their way to the Sweet 16. Jared McCain dropped down 30 against James Madison. Jeremy Roach leading the way this season uh, for the for the team, averaging 14. That's behind Filipowski, averaging 16. But uh, Tyrese Proctor also, he was great from the perimeter. It's going to be about if those guys can knock down shots because if they're not hitting their shots and Houston's got them locked up, then it's going to be tough and you're going to have to play through Filipowski. And what happens if Filipowski starts to become soft and can't um, handle the Houston defense with a physicality? That's going to be the question marks in this game for Duke. If if they're able to play right with the physicality of Houston and uh, knock down their shots and find the openings in the Cougars defense then they have the chance to win this game but the big question mark coming in can Duke rise to the occasion and match the physicality for Houston and uh, we'll probably see in the first couple minutes of this game for sure what will happen here so this is going to be an interesting one I'll keep you guys posted on Tennessee versus Creighton um, that's going to be a really good game as well to close out the Sweet 16 action 
and uh, both of the both of these games projected close point spreads on the line. Four and a half point spread advantage for Houston as the favorite on the line. Tennessee is a three and a half point spread favor over Creighton tonight. So yeah, this should be a good one. Tony on the stream, welcome back in. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. And uh, this should be a great game upcoming here. I am quite worried about the Big 12 because this is the only team they have remaining is in the Big 12 is Houston. The Big 12 was super overrated this season. They jacked up the net in their favor. They had a lot of teams like Iowa State, TCU. A lot of teams in the Big 12 played this weak non-conference schedule well into the 300s, and they played uh, a bunch of like bottom mid-major teams this season. Beat them by like 40, 45, 50 points to crush up their net ranking. And that's what Iowa State did. And Iowa State now, I, I think they're going to the Maui Invitational next year. Good for them because those are going to be quality games. Anytime you play in Maui, you're taking on big power five schools in those in those games for them. They got a mid-major game against UMKC, which is like a local regional game. But um, there, there should be no more scheduling these easy, easy opponents and stuff for some of these teams that they did this year for the Big 12 un unless they're like neighbors to one another like that UMK UMKC game makes sense for them because they're like neighbors and um like you'll you'll take on teams close by to save travel expenses and stuff like that you just don't want to make a habit and have like like six seven eight mid-majors packed on your schedule that have like single digit wins throughout the season like a lot of those big 12 teams did inflating their net ranking for this year so here we go about to tip off in just a moment dallas texas for the winner to face nc state on sunday how about that the 11 seed making a run all the way to the Elite Eight for NC State. Fantastic matchup on its way. In a couple moments from now, Houston's going to look to see if they can get ahead and stay ahead, control the pace, and put together defensive stops, second chance points, come up with offensive rebounds. Duke is going to look to see if they can knock down their shots from the perimeter. And a pretty good balance season for Duke, too. They're 50th in scoring in the nation, top 45 in the nation in defense this season, top 15 in three-point shooting. Can Duke match the physicality of Houston? That is the question. The, the most physical team in all college basketball. Starters look like this. Jeremy Roach, Jeremy McCain, Tyrese Proctor, Mark Mitchell, Kyle Filipowski for Duke. Going up against Houston with Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp, Joan Roberts, and Javier Francis, the starting five for the Houston Cougars. And we are underway as Duke controls the opening tip. Blue jerseys for Duke, white numbers, white letters, right to left on the floor for the Blue Devils. Houston goes in the white uniforms, red numbers, red letters. Right wing perimeter McCain, and already we see Dukes getting bounced off their spots around the perimeter. Houston brings the double to get it away out to the top over to Roach. Roach, a loose ball, turns it over. That's what you cannot do against this Houston Cougars defense. They're top 15 in the nation in steals per game. Houston's going to slow it down. First possession, left to right in the floor. Shed has it here at the top of the key for Houston. Bounce past the elbow into the hands to Roberts. Powers his way on Fizz up. Cal Filipowski takes it right to the rim. He scores with a left hand up and in off the backboard. Jawan Roberts with a step to the rim right past Kyle Filipowski and already one possession so far. Houston bringing the physicality. Duke needs to provide the answer if they want an opportunity in this game. McCain at the right wing. A lot of possessions here around the perimeter. You have to take it inside at the left corner. Roach skips it out to the right wing and it's a turnover. Horrendous start for Duke right now. Houston with their defense is befuddling Duke and John Shire needs to start getting his team coached ready. And I'm uh, making the adjustments because you do not want to look like Joe Muzula coming out of the timeouts. Already two possessions, two turnovers committed by Duke. Houston with possession number two. Shed at the right wing pro there. Shed dribbles up. Floats to the rudder inside the key off the back rib. Offensive rebound underneath. Dump off here for Houston as they put it up. And they score up and it off the backboard. Four zip. It is scored by Javier Francis. Front court players getting into the scoring. That's key for Houston. Usually the three guards. 
One and a half minutes so far. Duke with a three. Left wing. No good. Skidded off the front rim. Missed by Proctor. Rebound controlled by Roberts for Duke. Or Roberts for Houston. Houston with possession. Third possession. The game perfect. On the floor with their first two possession. Lob over the top. They throw it down with a two and flush by Javier Francis. And a timeout taken to the floor by Duke. Match my physicality. You ain't doing that so far for the Blue Devils. Six zip. Houston. Right out of the gate in this game. Get ahead, stay ahead. The motto for the Cougars the first time out tonight. Duke with a lot of question marks right now. They have just been smashed in the face to begin this game. How do they answer? Three possessions, three buckets by Houston. Big boy physical basketball right now. And Houston making sure that there's a team in the Big 12 remaining. What a start for the Cougars right now. This is a Houston team that has had humongous leads this season. 16 to zip against TCU in the Big 12 tournament. They were up by a bunch against Texas Tech. They uh, slammed Kansas, late stretch of the season. If you're new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well if you guys would like to be notified for future live streams. And Duke's going to want to operate their offense around the perimeter. You've got to get it inside if you want any chance. The issue is Houston's got the number two in de interior defense in college basketball. These guys are getting bounced off their spots around the perimeter in this game for Duke. And they, they are really just... Uh, just drawing blanks with these offensive possessions. Two turnovers, one missed shot from three. No quality looks. They haven't got anything inside the key. They haven't even got into the key so far in this game for Duke. You gotta get. You gotta try something down low, at least. You got three possessions. You missed the three. You turned it over twice. You gotta try something down down low. This is not boding well for Duke right now. John Shire, um, only his second season. Deepest run was is right now to the Sweet 16. Last year, they got smashed against Tennessee in the second round. And it's these physical teams that they're having a lot of difficulty competing with this year for Duke. Having a lot, a lot of issues. They just got punched in the mouth to begin the game by Houston. How do they respond? We're not even two minutes into the game. And John Shire, not much coaching experience. Going to make the adjustments right here. Second-year coach cannot look like a second-year NBA coach with Joe Muzzola making horrific adjustments. you got to come out. you got to make these adjustments if you want to have any sort of opportunity in this game for Duke to mount a comeback right now. Derby, welcome on the stream. Thanks for joining in. Houston has gone on scoring droughts, but not a good sign for Duke so far that it's been the front court guys who's all scored the points. Four points by Javier Francis, two points by Jerron Roberts. Shed. Sharp and Cryer have yet to score a bucket, yet to attempt, yet to attempt a shot between Sharp and Cryer. Yet the front court guys have gone and going so far. Calvin Sampson, fifth straight Sweet 16 appearance, always hanging in for Houston, making deep runs every single year. We come back from a timeout, six zip for Houston. Duke with a possession, already one timeout burn in the first half. Filipowski, top of the key, moves out to the right wing. Mitchell hands it off around the perimeter to. The outside here, McCain, loose ball, quarter, intercepted by Houston. Four possessions, three turnovers committed by Duke. Shed at the right corner, crossover dribble. Dribbles out to the right wing, he's going to slow it down. A six-zip lead by Houston for their opponent is more like being down 15-0. Sharp at the left wing, Sharp working one-on-one -on, -one on McCain. Switched here by Filipowski around the perimeter. He rolls down too late in time as they pass it off the roll down. Off the back room, no good. We get a foul picked up on the floor, charged to Duke. Filipowski was out of position, and Houston made him pay right there. You got to get back in position and guard Jawan Roberts. He didn't see the roller. Got to see the roller right there. 
Duke's about to get the inbound. 17 and a half left to go as they inbound a huge slam, but they bricked it off the back room. No good by Javier Francis. Offensive rebound back to Houston. The shed will slow it down. Moves it out to the right wing. Into the hands to Cryer. Cryer bounce pass goes over to Roberts. Roberts backs his way. Inside the key. Roberts double teamed underneath with a left hand. He scores up and in. It is good for two by Jawan Roberts. Eight zip Houston. In the first three minutes of action, Duke looking for an answer right now. They haven't got anything going. Filipowski top of the key into the hands of Mitchell. A lot of jitters just bobble the basketball. They played two mid-majors, and now they realize this is big boy basketball as we have a foul on the floor. Sharp went down. Is this on Houston or not? I believe it's going to be charged to, to Emmanuel Sharp, though. I believe it's on Sharp on the floor. And already Houston... Saying no match with this Duke team so far. Duke has got punched in the mouth and they've yet to have any sort of response. Andrew on the stream, welcome in. Inbound coming up for Duke underneath. Duke looking to get the inbound. Lob the Filipowski out to the perimeter. Able to grab it in time. Top of the key off to McCain. McCain going off for 30 the last game. It was against James Madison. This is a big step up. Not a mid-major team from the Sun Belt anymore. Jumper deep two. Free throw circle. Bricked off the back room. No good. Tipped up to the far side. McCain able to save it. At the right wing. Roach. Moose on top. Proctor fires it out. Filipowski tries a three. And he hits it. The big fella bears a three with Kyle Filipowski. Eight to three. Usually don't see him hitting threes too often right there. That's major. 16-20 left to go in the first. Top of the key, Shed. Outside, receives the handoff from Francis. Over to Shed again. Bounce pass off the roll down. Francis tried to save it out of bounds with it, though. It's a turnover comm committed by Houston. Yeah, usually don't see too many jumpers from the outside by Filipowski there. So that was a saving one. First turnover by Houston of the game. Three by Duke. Duke hasn't played an opponent like this for a long time this season. When they've had, they usually have uh, dropped those games this season. Top of the key, Filipowski moves it off. Proctor swung it out to the corner. That's a turnover. Bad, bad pass right there by... That was Jared McCain, number zero, off the roll down. Miscommunication all over the map by Duke currently as they have nothing going for them in this game. 8-3 to three Houston as we take the timeout. We'll be back coming up after the timeout. First media timeout in the game. Duke's already burned a timeout, and now we go to the second timeout, and they're not figuring out anything right now. They are just drawing blanks with their offense. They are all out of rhythm, all out of sorts. This Houston defense, how they pressure the basketball, clamp up on you, and really just get into your face for ball handlers is giving Duke nightmares right now. Duke not getting into any rhythm right now in this game. This is a bad sign for Duke. Duke that uh, the points are coming through the front court. Four points by Javier Francis, four by Jerron Roberts because you know eventually that Shed, Cryer, and Sharp, those three guys are capable of going off. Duke's only attempted attempted three shots so far in the first, first uh, four plus minutes. They're one for three from the floor. Kyle Filipowski off an offensive rebound made a three. They've turned it over more times than attempted shots in this game. They have four turnovers. They're one for three shooting. What a rough start by Duke. They, this is a very tough ask for a second year head coach to be making the adjustments right now. Going up against Calvin Sampson for Houston. So many teams can win it this year. Purdue, they they just look like they're playing just incredible. UConn is so dominant. Houston with a Houston redemption. This Houston team is resilient. They had multiple guys follow out, and they still won against Texas A&M. Plus, they played Texas A&M in the regular season. So that, that was kind of an um, injustice there for Houston because... They already played Texas A&M. Texas A&M had them scouted out. And it was a bad matchup for Houston because Texas A&M just drove on their defense the whole game. Dukes not going to do that. They're going to hover around the perimeter. And that's not going to work against this Houston team. We're gonna, they're they're going to force you to jack up contested shots, be in your face every single possession. 
Yeah, you you can re really make make out that all these teams that's made it this far. Like, it, it's so wide open for the championship. But when it comes down to dominance, I think UConn, Purdue, what they're showed today, and Houston, those three in particular. Based on the start of this game, if Houston can keep it up, I mean, they've looked incredible here. Uh, they smashed Longwood by 40, and they, they beat Texas A&M in overtime with multiple players falling out. And that, that simply is a bad matchup for them, considering they go only eight guys deep. John Shire looking to make adjustments right here, right now. 8-3 to three Houston. When you're down by 5 points against Houston, it feels like it's more like you're down by 15. Houston with the basketball. Houston's already forced 4 turnovers, all 8 points in the paint. Baseline dribble sharp, fall away, swoosh, delivers on the 2. Houston with a 7 point lead. Duke's going to cross midcourt right now. Top of the key, Jeremy Roach, 20 in the shot clock. Sends it off to Proctor. Proctor at the right wing perimeter. Brings a double. Roach on top. Sends it off to Filipowski around the wing. Roach, 15 in the shot clock. Hand off to Proctor. Proctor dribbles up. It drives downhill. Floats up the shot. Mid-range. Connects on it. So that's the first time they work their way into the key in the game for Duke. And finally, they're able to hit something offensively. Creighton and Tennessee just tipped off. Creighton with a two-zip lead. Houston with the ball. Sharp sends it on top over to Roberts. Roberts dribbles up. Drives downhill on Filipowski. That's going to be Young who blocks it out of bounds. Big block right there by Ryan Young for Duke. First time he's come onto the floor tonight. So starting to show something right now for Duke in this game. Being more physical coming back from that last time out. Oh, it wasn't clean, though, so it was not a clean block by Ryan Young. This will be two shots of the free throw line for Jawan Roberts. First free throw. No good. This is a win-win situation right here for Duke. Anytime you send Houston to the free throw line, Houston's not a great free throw shooting team. They rank in the 200s with a 67% free throw shooting percentage this season. Second free throw in a straight line. No good. Around the rim and out. Rebound controlled by Filipowski. That's a win-win possession right there for Duke. I know they picked up the foul. It was by a bench player, though, with Ryan Young. And Houston has struggled at times this season at the free throw line. Filipowski pops up for the three. Missed off the rim. No good. Battle for the rebound goes down to Cryer for Houston. Up the floor now with Shed. Shed at the top of the key. Hand off Cryer. Cryer floats up the runner at the elbow. No good. Rebound pulled down by Filipowski. Duke finding something right now. Looking to push more in transition. Roach sends it on top. Filipowski backs his way. Low block here. Filipowski brings a double team. Shovels it outside. Top of the key. A three. Roach off the mark. No good. A rebound secured by Roberts. Houston with the ball leading 10 to 5. Up the floor. Cryer puts the ball into the hands to Roberts here at the right wing. Hand off to Shed. Shed's got blow by speed. Watch out for him at the right wing perimeter here for Shed. Shed up fake. Bounce pass Roberts at the right baseline. He's defended by Young. Young already with one foul. Roberts left handed hook shot over Young. Missed off the back from no good. Rebound secured by Filipowski. Yeah, um, that's awesome, man. Lob down low underneath Ryan Young. He is open. Able to score for two. That's the first time tonight we've seen miscommunication by Houston. They have gone on scoring droughts this season, so that's been an issue. Having a little bit of trouble finishing down low in this game as well. Three-point game currently. Duke, after being punched in the mouth to begin this game, responding. Houston on a two-plus-minute scoring drought. Houston with the ball at the right wing. Shed's yet to score so far tonight. He has it at the right wing. Shed, baseline dribble. Skip pass off the fingertips of his teammate. And he got clobbered as well. That's going to be a foul committed by the Blue Devils. Wow. Major, major contact down low. Jawan Roberts. It was deflected by Young, and Roberts came down with a ball at the baseline, got knocked down from behind. And this will be six in the shot clock here. They're not going to reset the shot clock? I guess not. Let's see. Duke was... Oh, uh, yeah, they were out of bounds with it. So Houston gets the inbound. So they say six in the shot clock. Houston, shot clock's down to three. Jumper, mid-range, sharp, and no good around the rim and out. Rebound secure by Roach. Winning three right now for Duke after a really rough start. Filipowski sends it off to the left wing. Proctor off the roll down. Filipowski draws a double team. Low block. Filipowski has to get away. He's stripped on the top. And that will be a reach and foul committed by Houston. 
And that's Houston's first personal foul. Things looking really good for Houston considering that they don't have any foul trouble so far in this game. 13 minutes left to go here in the first. Duke will get the inbound underneath. Proctor passes wide open three quarters. Skipped around the rim and out. No good. Missed by Roach. Under 13 minutes left to play. Houston started off 3 for 4. Red hot from the floor. They're 2 for 7 ever since. Trying to get their offensive rhythm back. At the left wing, Cryer. Pressured. Bounce pass over to the top of the keto. Dunn hands it off to Shed. Demarion Dunn, first time on the floor, number 11. Shed at the top. Shed dribbles up at the mid block. Shed floats up the shot. No good off the front rim. Out of bounds off of Houston. Filipowski, great heads up play. Tipped it off the shoe of Cedric Latin out. As Creighton leads in the first three and a half minutes, seven to three over Tennessee currently. If you're new in the stream here, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell on this one. Fast paced start on the time clock so far. Three personal fouls now by Houston, two by Duke. We get a substitution here for the Cougars, number three. Ramon Walker checks in. Jawan Roberts will take a seat on the bench currently for the Cougars here. Three-point game, 12 and a half left to go in the first. Hit us up in the chat, by the way, who guys like to win this one. Typing in Duke or Houston. Duke after a very slow start. Hanging in, Filipowski down low, brings a double team. Filipowski trying to get it away. Filipowski underneath, no good off the glass. Offensive rebound, Ryan Young, Young underneath, brings a triple team, and he gets fouled. Houston's just swarming dudes. Right now, fourth personal foul, though, picked up to the Cougars tonight. This will send Ryan Young to the free to line. Fourth personal foul committed by Houston as a team. Two by Duke, the grad student from Stewartsville, New Jersey, shooting two. First one, no good. Substitution for Duke checking in is Sean Stewart. He's in his first season from Windermere, Florida. He replaces Kyle Filipowski, who heads towards the bench. So inexperienced right now in the front court with a first year. Second free throw missed to the line to go empty with Ryan Young. That was a big gift on Sunday with a win over Texas A&M. Multiple bricked free throws by Texas A&M in that game. Shed has it at the right wing. Bounce pass goes to Demarion Dunn. Dunn backs his way to the low block. He's working one-on-one -on, -one on McCain. Jumper mid-range. Missed off the back room. No good. A rebound secure by McCain for Duke. Under 12 left to go on the first. McCain moves it on top. Young into the hands to Roach. Dribbles towards his right. On the outside, Proctor. Skip pass left wing. McCain. McCain guarded by Dunn. One-on-one. -on -one. Shot clock's down to 16. Edge in the midcourt logo here for Roach. Roach slows down the tempo. Roach dribbles up, drives inside the paint. Roach gets it out to the top of the key. Here's a three. Off the rim, no good. Deflected out of bounds. Last touched off of Duke. And this will be Houston basketball. 11.28 left to go as this will take us to the media break. 11.28 left to play in the first. And this has turned into a defensive battle here. Nobody can buy a bucket lately. 10-7 Houston leads. What's good, young poppy yo on the stream? Welcome back in. Patrick on the channel, welcome back on board. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Reed Shepard is thinking about staying for him. I haven't checked on the updates in a couple of days, but I, I heard he was thinking about staying for him. I'm not sure about the other players for Kentucky. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Ring that notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel. And uh, let's see, check in here with Creighton against Tennessee. Creighton leads 7-6 to six right now against Tennessee with 14.55 left to go. We have 11.28 remaining right now in the first half. And, yep, this has been Brick City in tonight's game here. Four points each between Javier Francis and Juwan Roberts. Emmanuel Sharp is two. Houston yet to even attempt a three so far in this game. They were raining threes against Texas A&M. They... They made 10 threes against Texas A&M. And tonight, they've yet to even attempt a three. Duke is limited to shoot one for six from the perimeter. They were drilling threes all over the place against James Madison. 
Filipowski has two. Proctor or uh, Filipowski has three and four rebounds. Proctor is two. Two points off the bench by Ryan Young. So whoever wins this game will face NC State. Winner of Creighton versus Tennessee will face Purdue in the Elite Eight. Yeah, we've come to realize the Big 12 is not that good this year. A lot of those teams inflated their net ranking because they played against this really weak schedule in the non-conference league. A lot of those teams like Iowa State, TCU, they had non-conference schedules well into the 300s this season for them. Duke's done a much better job. Looked like they were drawing question marks to begin this game. Houston was up 5-0 to zero and Duke has been able to draw this game closer. Houston's gone into massive scoring droughts. The game's still benefiting Houston style, though. Houston loves to uh, just slow down the tempo, play their style, get ahead, and stay ahead. Ooh, some words there. Calvin Sampson to one of the officials. He was unhappy during the timeout huddle just a moment ago. He had some words to one of the referees. 11.28 left to go as we're going to get back to action here in just a moment. Duke's starting to settle in after four turnovers very early in this game for Duke. Tennessee now leads over Creighton 11-9 with 13.40 left. So this will be Duke inbound coming up underneath their nets. Proctor to inbound passer underneath. Proctor lobs it off to Roach around the perimeter. It's Proctor, Roach, McCain, Filipowski, and Sean Stewart, the five on the floor. Mish jumper came off the rim short. No good by Roach. Rebound controlled by Houston. Houston's going to slow it down. They're going to slow it down to their tempo. Cryer hands it off to Shed. Cryer, Shed, Sharp. Javier Francis and Houston picks up an offensive foul. An illegal screen set by the Cougars. That's their fifth as a team. That is picked up. Charged to Javier Francis. Four, four turtles by Duke. That's the second one by Houston tonight. Inbound Duke. Proctor. Signaling the offense. Brings a double team around the perimeter. Lobs it off to Filipowski who brings a double at the elbow. Outside to the top here with Roach. They move it off to McCain. McCain dribbles inside. Pro hop inside the key. Slices the feathers. Couldn't finish at the rim. And McCain gets called on the travel. So yeah, I thought so. That was way too many steps right there by McCain. Pro... Pro hop jump stop, and then he went up and uh, walked once again with a basketball. That's turnover number five committed by Duke tonight. Houston with the ball, ten and a half left to go. Shed dribbles up, jumper to elbow, no good. Skipped around the rim and out. Rebound secured here for Stewart for Duke. Nobody can buy a bucket right now. Ten to seven to score. Proctor at the top. He's defended by Javier Francis. No points by either team in the last three minutes plus. So if you guys are joining in, yeah, this score hasn't changed in a while. Filipowski bulldozes his way to the rim. No good over the cylinder. And Cryer able to save it at the baseline as Houston comes up with a basketball. Tough, tough defensive game. Both of these teams cannot finish at the rim. Houston with it. Cryer floats at the runner. Open up the bank right there. Hey, finally somebody scores a bucket. LJ Cryer off the mid-range floater. Dropped it down for two off the glass. 12-7 Houston. Duke with the ball. Proctor at the left wing. Just seven points by Houston in the first 10 minutes plus of the first half. Filipowski top of the key. Filipowski dribbles straight line. Powers his way down low. Tough defense by Houston. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Duke. Just so slow in the dribble drive penetration by Filipowski. Everybody knows it's coming. It's just super predictable. You gotta 
Start to snap the ball. Move the basketball if you're Duke, if you want to have any chance. Got to move that ball around. That basketball is sticking right now. Houston with the ball up by five. Top of the key, Cryer. Into the hands to Roberts. Dribbles towards his left. At the left corner, Roberts backs his way on McCain. Now at the mid block, Roberts pivot move up and in. Hits the spot. It's good. Up and in off the backboard for two by Jerron Roberts. He's having an excellent start so far in this one. Six points by Roberts. Almost half of the points. Three for five from the floor. Front court guys combining for 10 of the 14. Four by Francis. Two each between Sharp and Cryer. By the way, Shed is yet to score tonight in this game. Zero for three shooting. So they're all-star, all-American guard is yet to score. Yet they're still up in this game by seven. Deflection. And it goes out of bounds. It's out of bounds by Duke. Another turnover. 14-7. Duke up to their sixth turnover of the game. Just slow tempo, patient possessions here for Houston, and it's paying dividends. Top of the key. Houston dribbles towards the left wing of Roberts. Roberts backs his way left elbow. Outside finds Cryer. They've yet to even attempt a three today. Cryer keeps the dribble alive. Sharp handoff shed. Outside Cryer. Cryer at the top. Dribbles up left wing. Shot clock's down to, down to eight. Bounce pass down low. Bouncing bodies. And that will be a foul here. Picked up. Charge to Roberts. That's offensive. So Roberts bulldozes over McCain, lowers the shoulder, offensive foul picked up, charge to Chawan Roberts. That's his second personal foul right now. Hey, what's good? We got Dominic McCrab back in the stream. Roberts will... Is he going to check out or no? Yes, he will. He'll head towards the bench. Duke's only made three shots in this half. They've turned it over six times. That's not a good sign. Right there when they've turned it over. Double the amount of times has made field goals so far. Right wing perimeter. Jared McCain moves it down inside. Dribble drive into the low block. Blakes. Tough shot. No good. Around the rim and out. Tipped off the glass. Offensive rebound back to Blakes. Here's a three. Straight away. Swoosh. They finally make one with Jared McCain. 14-10 now. The ball was able to bounce their way off the offensive rebound. Six personal fouls by Houston, two by Duke. McCain up to his first three in a night. Shed's yet to score. Outside on the perimeter, Sharp moves it off to Shed. Shot clock's down to 12. Shed, top of the key, guarded by Filipowski. Shed, dribble drive, kick out to the corner. Here's an open three for Houston. Missed off the rim, no good. Rebound secured by Duke. I have to say, Duke's done a good job packing the glass, boxing out inside the paint. Proctor, crossover, outside deflected, intercepted. Here goes Shed out to the races, and he lays it up and in for the two. Jamal Shed with an interception in the bucket. 16-10 for Houston. That's a bad, bad pass right there by Duke. That was like Monchilovich yesterday in the final minute to seal the deal with it. Terrence Shannon Jr. with a dunk. Seven minutes left to go before halftime. Mitchell, off fake, drives downhill, double team underneath. He got blocked. Shed pushing tempo up the floor for Houston, 16-10. Shed, top of the key now. Dribbles, drives. He finds an opening. Shed, right to the rim, no good. Tipped off the glass, and Shed is down. He is hurt at the moment here. They get a 5-4 and four for Duke. Transition three. Off the rim, no good. Bodies colliding all over the place. Loose ball, and Shed is still down right now in Houston. Timeout signal on the floors. They will get a timeout, and Shed is down. He is injured right now, and he is in pain. As we stop the clock with 6.38 left to go, Shed off the drive to the hoop came crashing down into the stanchion. I think he's pointing out to his lower right ankle right now as we cut immediately to a commercial break. 6.38 left to go. Prayers for Jamal Shed. Oh my goodness. I mean, Houston's been so close. Final four at the start of this decade. And, uh, oh man, that's just a huge blow right there. If, um, if it's something serious, that's a major blow. And injuries have derailed, uh, their team this year. But they built an incredible culture that 32 and four, even with the injuries that they sustained for Houston, I mean, overcoming. Adversity and resiliency. This team, time and time again, knows how to do it. And uh, prayers out to that young man right there, Jamal Shed, the star of this team. That's a major blow if they can't get him back on the floor. 
Uh, for my real job, I, I do commentary on the side for a couple of colleges, but it's it, it only pays like part-time, so it's not like a full-time gig. I actually uh, work full-time in radio, so um, I do radio production for my full-time job. Yeah, I wish I could do like more like full time, um, like sports broadcasting, play by play. But there's not really like much out there. Like the only things that are out there is like the national TV guys, like the guys in the big contracts. A lot of the other stuff is like contract free, uh, freelance work. That's usually like a couple hours per week. Man, I hope that this is nothing serious right now. If you're new on the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring the notification bell as well. If you guys would like to be notified for future live streams in the channel. Right now, Tennessee leads Creighton 16-14. We have stopped the clock with 6.38 left to play. Man, bodies were flying everywhere. Shed was going to go in for the score there. He had to step past Filipowski downhill to the rim. Oh, uh, we'll see if uh if that happens someday. No updates here on Shed just yet. I'm looking at Twitter right now. He was grabbing his ankle in pain right next to the stanchion, drove right past Mitchell, got past Filipowski. Oh, he rolled his ankle. He rolled his right ankle. As he went in for that drive to the rim. That's why he missed the layup. He had a, he had a step past Mitchell too. He got right past Filipowski. This is not good. Heading towards the locker room. Not good right now. Jamal Shedd being escorted. Helped out by two of the staff members to the locker room for Houston. Man, that's just a big blow right there. Yeah, I remember that. Kevin Ware. That was horrific. 2013. I was a junior in high school, came into the sound recording class the next day in high school, and we were all talking about that. That was awful. Tennessee leads Creighton 18-14. LFG in the stream, welcome back in. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for the thumbs up. Houston with the basketball up by six, but concern for their top player, Jamal Shedd, had to be escorted to the locker room. Top of the key here for Houston, going to... Have to be resilient like they did when multiple players falling out against Texas A&M found a way to win. Up fake at a corner with Ramon Walker. Top of the key, LJ Cryer. They've had multiple injuries this season, but somehow, some way, record of 32-4. and four. Off the back rim, misfire, tipped around. Defensive rebound hauled in by Duke here. Duke with possession. Just above six minutes left to go before halftime. This is going to have to be a masterpiece defensively here for Houston. To have the opportunity. Roach at the top of the key. Really opens up the door for NC State. If if uh, Houston's able to come out of this one. Really, really opens up the door for NC State. To make it to the final four. Up fake Roach. Outside top of the key. Filipowski. Shot clock's down to three. Has to launch up a prayer. And he does and he sinks it. Kyle Filipowski leading four. Second made three of the game for Duke. That's major right there for Filipowski. Six points out of the 13. Houston slows down the possession. It's Malik Wilson who's taking it up the floor. Wilson, edge of the March Madness logo. Moves it off to Cryer. Cryer defended by McCain. Dribbles up to the elbow. Cryer, spin move, fall away. Tough shot. Good to go. Good for two off the deep two. LJ. 18-13 right now. That's a tough shot right there off the spin move. That's some momentum there for Houston. Without Shed, able to generate some offense in the game. And we got an offensive foul away from the basketball committed by the Blue Devils. Filipowski, the guilty party, commits the foul. Let's see, it wasn't even near the basketball here. Jostling for a position between him and Ramon Walker. Filipowski picks up personal foul number two right now. He's going to stay in the game at the moment for Filipowski. Two personal fouls by Cedric Lath and Jerron Roberts for Houston. Filipowski has two for Duke. Here's a three, top of the key. Cryer off the back room, no good. Battle for the rebound, and it's going to be 50-50 on the play. Houston try to force the tie-up possession arrow. 
They're going to give him the possession. They're going to give the loose ball. They're going to give him a loose ball foul. Wow. So this will be Duke Frito is coming up in the bonus. One and one. That will be Houston's seventh personal foul. That looked like Houston had the tie up. But this will be free throws here at the line. Jalen Blake shooting in the one and one bonus for Duke. Duke missed their first two shots tonight at the free throw line. Both missed by Ryan Young. Blake's in the one and one, and he got it. First one's good. So Filipowski's on the bench. Same score as Tennessee versus Creighton. Tennessee leads 18 to 14. Second free throw is good. 18 and 15 now. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining in, Andrew. Enjoy the rest of your night. Blake's checks out of the game. Houston yet to make a free throw tonight. Outside it goes to Sharp. Laces up a three. Missed off the rim. No good. A rebound secure by Young for Duke. And Young pushed off. That's going to be a foul picked up. Charged to Ryan Young. A lot of questionable calls by this referee crew tonight so far. Ryan Young came up with a rebound. Oh, yeah, he did step out of bounds with it. He did step out of bounds, so that was not a foul for him. He didn't have one foot on the baseline. That was correct right there. The other one, the 50-50, I thought that was a tie by Houston. Jumper mid-range, no good. Missed off the rim short by Demarion Dunn. Duke down by three. Chance to tie it up with a three this possession. They started out cold from the floor. Snaking their way through the defense. Dump off down low. Mitchell throws it down with a two-handed flush. It's a one-point game. 18-17 currently. Approaching the four-minute mark left to go before halftime in a stone-cold offensive game here. Sharp drives on Young. Double clutch. Couldn't finish at the rim. Sharp absorbs the contact and the foul. So if you're just joining in, Jamal Shedd went down, rolled his right ankle, looked pretty bad as he had to get helped out to the locker room by two of the medical staff trainers and hasn't returned ever since. That's, that's not good because he's such a key player for this team and they just haven't found any sort of rhythm offensively without Jamal Shedd on the floor right now. 18-17. to 17, Houston by one. Top score in the game for Houston. Jawan Roberts with six. But he's got two personal personal fouls. Four points by Javier Francis. Four points by LJ Cryer. And uh, two each between Emmanuel Sharp and Shed. But I'm going to see if there's any updates with Shed. Yeah, Kevin Ware was the uh, name of the player for Louisville. That um suffered that horrific injury. Yeah, I really wonder what, he, what, uh, what he's been up to. Right now for him, I'm going I'm to check and see if there's any updates. What, what a story for him. I forgot about that. He went back to Georgia State. So Kevin Ware suffered an injury at Louisville back in 2013. He went back to Georgia State to finish his degree 2016 in his senior year at Georgia State. His team beat Baylor in an upset. That was uh, with Ron Hunter, who fell off the chair. They upset Baylor. R.J. Hunter, Ron Hunter's son, drilled a three from the logo to win the game for Georgia State. So Kevin Ware played on that 2016 NCAA tournament Georgia State squad. Um, good, good to see. He's been playing the ball. He hasn't played since last season for him. He's been playing overseas, it looks like, for him. So since 2017, he played in Finland. He's been playing all over Finland, the Czech Republic. Over in Canada in 2019. 2020, he played back in Finland. Uh, 2021, played in England. Serbia. Rio in, wow, in uh, Santa Cruz, Argentina. Wow, 2022, he's out in Argentina. He played last for a team out of the Mexican League in uh, last year in 2023 for Kevin Ware. So he's been all over the country still playing. Good, good, good to see that he's uh, 
been able to still play like after the injury there because I remember it took him some time to play college ball again and then he transferred over to Georgia State so he started off in 2011 ended up getting his degree in 2016. Houston has scored 10 out of their 18 points off turnovers in this game right now. Dukes turned it over eight times tonight. Greg on the stream, welcome in. Wow, that's awesome. So uh, LFG got NC State there, one of his five brackets. Yeah, wow, what a what a story for NC State. Just unbeatable after winning five straight in five games in five straight days. Emmanuel Sharp here at the free to line, shooting two, got followed on the. Um, on the shooting motion. Both of them are good. 20-17 to 17 now for Houston. This this Houston team is resilient. They find ways to win somehow, some way. I think a couple years ago, I streamed the game when they took on Texas Tech. And they only made three field goals in the second half. In a tie game at halftime, they still won. They won by double digits. They went to the free throw line like 40-something times in half two. And they made like most of their free throws in one against Texas Tech. That is going to be... An offensive foul picked up. Charge to Duke. That's number nine for turnovers tonight for Duke. Houston took the charge down low. Cougars with a possession. Edge of the March Madness logo done. Swings it off to Cryer. Cryer at the right wing. They've yet to make a three. Still, they get the lead. Cryer inside the key. Moves it outside. Done at the left wing. Out to Cryer. Top of the key. 39% three-point shooter this season. Pull up jumper. No good. Airballed it. That had the distance. He set it wide right, though. He created space off the jab step, too. They're 0 for 4 from 3. Duke is 3 for 9. The Blue Devils with possession. Top of the key, Proctor. Passes off to McCain. McCain dribbles up inside the key. Jumper mid-range. Strolls to 2. That's a quick release right there for Jared McCain. One point game, three minutes left to go before halftime. And indeed, what a turbot it's been. McCain's got five. Houston with possession. They dribble to the right wing by Malik Wilson. Wilson draws a double team on the outside. They get it away on top to Demarion Dunn. Hand off Sharp. Crossover. Sharp dribbles. Drives. Mid block. Turn around. Jumper. Mid range. No good. Skipped around the rim. And now that's going to be over the back. Picked up. Charge to Houston. And Duke will be shooting free throws as Duke will see if they can take the lead for the first time tonight. This is actually bonus Duke. 20 to 19. That's the eighth personal foul committed by Houston. Five by Duke in this game. Two forty six left to play before half. If you're just joining in, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams in the channel. Here we go. One and one at the free to line. First one is good by Proctor. Duke with a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Tennessee leads Creighton 24-23 with five minutes left to play in the first. Second shot. Proctor takes the lead. This is the first lead for the Blue Devils tonight. 21-20. Big trouble right now for Houston. Without their main leader in the floor, Jabal Shed went down earlier this half due to injury. Rolled his right ankle. Edge of the March Madness logo with LJ Cryer to transfer from Baylor. Receives the handoff from his teammate Cryer. Dribbles, attacks, floats with the runner off the back of no good. A rebound secured by Ryan Young. And Duke with a one-point advantage will slow it down. They're playing their style right now with a lead. Roach crosses the midcourt logo. 18 on the shot clock. Top of the key, Ryan Young. Young. Towards his left, bounce pass off to McCain. McCain fires the pass, deflected out of bounds by Houston. Yeah, Houston's got to get something going on, and it's going to be really difficult the rest of the stretch of this game here. 21 20, 205 left to play. Proctor underneath the inbound passer. Proctor lobs it off to Young. Hand off back to Proctor. Proctor jumper. 14 footer around the rim and out. Rebound ripped away in the glass by Ramon Walker. Houston has it here up the floor, crossing midcourt. Sharp dribbles, drives, attacks inside the paint. Double clutch missed off the mark off. It's a rebound that went well short, but Javier Francis going up, go followed. And he'll have two coming up at the free to line. 
chance to take the lead back for Houston. Houston yet to make a free throw tonight. Or uh, before their first two that they made. They're two for four now at the free throw line. For the most part, they did not make a free throw for a while. Two shots here by Javier Francis. First free throw, well short. Missed it off the mark. 149 left to play. Shed is back on the bench. Not sure the extent of the injury by Shed during halftime. I'll see if there's any updates from Twitter. Oh, that's a big U. That's an air ball on a free throw right there in an NCAA tournament Sweet 16 game. You gotta be kidding me. Nothing but the bottom of the net. The wrong part of the net as it never went through the top into the netting. Gray is the bottom. Oh. Missing free throws poorly in the Sweet 16. Roach at the mid block. Moves it outside. McCain dribbles up inside a key. Outside up fake. Mitchell dribbles downhill low block. Mitchell finds his man top of the key off the Proctor. 10 on the shot clock. Proctor towards his left at the left wing. Proctor defended 101. Crossover dribbles up. Jumper mid range came up short. Rebound control by Houston. Francis came up with a defensive rebound. They just had that horrific miss of the free throw line on the previous two. And Houston here will burn the timeouts. 1.13 left to go before halftime. The Cougars will talk things over right now. This is a really, really bad display of offense. Really ba bad display of offense here. Houston is shooting 32%. They're 0 for 4 from 3. Duke is 7 for 22. They have more turnovers than field goals made this half. 32% shooting by Duke. 9 turnovers for the Blue Devils. This is turning into an ugly game right now. And poor Houston, because Jamal Shedd with his injury is yet to come back on the floor. Hey, I'll see you back tomorrow, Bryce. Thanks for stopping by, man. Eight personal fouls coming by Houston, six by Duke. Minute 13 left to go before halftime. Houston will get the inbound coming up. Jamal Shedd is yet to return, still on the bench after... Rolling his ankle on a dribble drive play as we come back to action. LJ Cryer has an edge of the March Madness logo. Top of the key now for Houston. Bounce pass goes out to the left wing for the Cougars. Number two is Cedric Latt. They're on a scoring drought in the last three minutes with no points. Baseline dribble tried to stay in bounds. Walking the tight rope and they turn it over. That's a turnover com committed by Houston as the ball will go back to Duke. This is just rough to watch. Both of these teams just so out of sync offensively. Four turtles by Houston, nine by Duke. Houston's going to have to muddy it up this entire game because they just can't figure out anything offensively. Right now, Roach on the outside. Hand off to Proctor. McCain has it. Top of the key. 12 on the shot clock. McCain dribbles up. Jumper. Turtle around. Mid-range. Bounces in. 23-20 to 20 now for Duke. Finding some momentum going into halftime. Houston's going to have some sort of answer here. This is getting difficult for the Cougars. Shot clock's turned off. 24 seconds remain before halftime. Houston crosses the midcourt logo. They slow down tempo. They're in a 3 minute 45 second scoring drought. LJ Cryer. They've yet to make a 3 here in the first half. Cryer has that the March Madness logo. Cryer. 5 seconds. Cryer dribbles up, crossover, Cryer, Cryer here, taking it himself off the glass, bakes it home at the buzzer, off the floater, gives Houston some momentum entering halftime, 23-22, as we go into the half, LJ Cryer, I can take it myself, man, dribble drive, floating up the runner, contested from the side by Croc Proctor, open up the bank right there for LJ, one point lead for the Blue Devils going into halftime. And a very, very limited offensive display of a game. It's been all defense. And Houston without their top player on the floor. 
Try to see if they can muddy it up the remaining part of this game. 23-22 at the half. Big, big time shot by Cryer. Houston started off this game. They punched Duke in the mouth. They led early on 5 to zip. Duke didn't have any answers. There were a lot of turnover miscues, but then the tides changed, and that's when Jamal Shed went down. Everything turned to uh, Duke's favor, and Houston hasn't even scored 10 points ever since Shed left the game. So right now we're going to half. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams I cover. The winner of this game will take on NC State on Sunday. Could potentially set up a rematch between Duke and NC State or a 1983 National Championship game rematch between Houston and NC State. By the way, this is the first all-time meeting between Duke and Houston. I'm, I'm shocked that this is the first time these two teams have met up historically. I'm going to switch it over to Cre uh, Creighton and Tennessee and see how that game's going on. That's a big shot by LJ Cryer. Huge. They've yet to make a three so far tonight. Gonna have to get one eventually. Creighton leads by one right now. 30 to 29 with 245 left to play in the first half. Steven Ashworth from the parking lot just pulled up and banged a three. Yeah, this is a really, really low score. Looking like the first of 50, if they're lucky, is going to win this game tonight. Creighton by one. 225 left to go. Quarter three. Shireman connects on it. 33-29 Creighton. And Tennessee ends up burning a timeout. They got shooters on that Creighton squad. I remember there was a game like back in 2012, Tennessee against Georgetown, and both of the teams scored in the 30s. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if there's any update here with Jamal Shedd. Questionable to return per per the CBS broadcast for Jamal Shed. So he rolled his ankle for Shed. I mean, it's just brutal. Houston. It's it's too bad. Like. They they've just had injury issues for them this season. Key players getting hurt, but somehow, some way, Houston is just so resilient. Like they, they shouldn't even be playing in this game right now for Houston, honestly, because they had multiple guys foul out against Texas A and M, and they somehow won that way. That's just resiliency. Like this team is resilient. They, they're gonna muddy it up as much as possible. Get, they get the number one defense in college hoops, and they come out. They force turnovers to Duke. They limit Duke to twenty three in the first half without Shed on the floor, and they're going to have to put together a defensive masterpiece in uh, the second half. Duke outscored Houston 13-6 ever since Shed left the game. 
It's just uh, unfortunate there for Houston. This team's been so close every single every single year making deep run in the tournament. Yeah, hoping uh, that could get double digits out of that for uh, for you, Jason. Mike Tyson against Jake Paul. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it can go with the, all the way to the end there. Hey, what's good, Curtis in the stream? Welcome in. Thanks for dropping in. Thirty-three twenty-nine. Creighton is leading Tennessee, and Tennessee is starting to miss their shots. That's the issue for Tennessee this season: is that they have gone on times that they've been on the scoring droughts, lengthy scoring droughts for them. Hmm. Yeah, I usually have Wendy's, so I'll probably. Probably go with Wendy's right there. Thirty-three, thirty-two, one point lead by Creighton right now against Tennessee down to the final minute 15 left to go before half. Their offense is so complex to track down. They got guys moving all around off the ball. It's kind of similar to Golden State. Yikes. That was a terrible shot. I think that was Mason, Mason Miller, if I'm not mistaken, that just took a terrible shot off the top of the glass by Creighton. Both of these teams winning the next minute or so will be in halftime together. This has been, been a fun tournament. I, I thought it would be much more upsets than what we've had with uh, more so chalk. But NC State making their run all the way to the Elite Eight. That is something special for their squad. Clemson, I did not predict that whatsoever. Just, wow, how they get slammed against Boston College. And then they crushed New Mexico. Beat Arizona. Man, did not predict that. Three in a row. New Mexico, Baylor, and Arizona. Hey, what's good? Bradley in the stream. Welcome in. Things going pretty well. Yeah, so uh, if, if Houston comes out of this, it will be 1 versus 11. The The big concern for your team for Houston is their star player, Jamal Shedd. He, he rolled his ankle earlier on in the first half in Duke. Um, has outscored Houston ever since 13 to six when when uh, shed went down and he's questionable to return just crushing right there because I mean Houston's been so close it seems like every single year injuries derail their team Creighton by one five seconds left to go before halftime Ashworth at the buzzer no good came up short and they'll go into halftime Creighton 35 Tennessee 34. What a battle between those two teams at the half. We got two one-point games at halftime, a higher-scoring one between Creighton and Tennessee, and this one has been all defense, 23-22 Duke. Looked like Houston was going to run away with this thing starting off the game. Houston led 5-0 Duke. He, here's a stat about Duke is that they have 
more turnovers right now than they do for field goals in this game. Duke is 8 for 23 shooting. They have 9 turnovers in the first half. And then Houston has four turnovers. Houston is 10 for 29. Houston's yet to make a three. They're coming off a game where they made 10 threes against Texas A&M. The guards have to get going for Houston. Sharp's got just four. He's coming off 30 against Texas A&M. Six by Cryer. Cryer's only three for eight shooting. Cryer made that buzzer beater, though. That was huge. That's a big momentum builder for Houston, getting that buzzer beater. He banked up a floater at the buzzer. Ah, oh, sorry to hear about that, Jay Ramirez. So uh, his bracket got crushed yesterday. Yikes. Yeah, Arizona really didn't do any favors. I've, I've never been high in Arizona this year for them. I, I knew they were going to falter somewhere. I just, I just couldn't trust them. They got too many bad losses this season that eventually it would equate to something. So Arizona coming into the tournament, somehow they were a two seed, yet they had losses against Oregon State. They gave up 98 points to Stanford, and they lost against USC. Uh, that resume, based on those bad losses, didn't really speak as a two seed in the tournament. Somehow they got a two seed, and a lot of people um, down to the final week of the season were saying if they win the Pac-12 tournament outright, they could potentially work themselves up to a one seed, which is crazy. I mean, you don't suffer terrible losses like that and get yourself into a super high seeding, and eventually you knew it was going to come that Arizona would, would get upset somewhere in happened to be yesterday against Clemson. Right now, we're just at halftime. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams in the channel. Both games are at halftime. Both games decided by one point in the first half. 23-22 here as Duke leads by one. Creighton leads over Tennessee 35-34 at the half. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, a Louisville fan sent an um, Oakland fan there a massive check or, uh, for for uh, Oakland to their athletics program. A massive check because they knocked out Kentucky. Yeah, Jack Goldkey leads the nation in threes made per game this season. It's just one of those random dudes in the stats that just pops up and becomes like a March Madness hero for a night. One random night in March. Just becomes a hero on either the Thursday or the Friday. Gotta make my uh, that my yearly reminder next year. Um, some, some dude on one of these teams that's like a lower seed. Like a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is gonna go off that night. That's like a statistical leader. Uh, M, welcome on the stream. Um, I'm planning to for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to cover both streams. I'm out during the day. I got a lacrosse game I'm announcing at 1 p.m., but I have to do the post-game um, write-up articles for those games. So it all, it all depends on when the statistics are given to me for that. So... Um, I'm not exactly sure when I'll be back home, but I'm planning on covering both of the games, hopefully. Yeah, so quick update for tomorrow is that um, I'm planning on doing both of the games. I'm not going to schedule them out until I get home, though. I got a lacrosse game at 1 that I'm announcing, and then um, recently... After my announcing, I've been helping out the sport, the athletics communications department at the at the college team that I announced for to write up a lot of the post game articles that they do. But 
it's uh it's very time consuming if they don't get the stuff in time it's all like time dependent because sometimes the stats are updated in time or somebody enters the stats wrong and if there's an issue i have to wait like extra time for that to happen and um for those stats to be out so i can write like the recaps and stuff so if if the people are doing their job and not falling around then my recap will be written in a in a good amount of time where um, i should be able to cover at least one of the games for tomorrow but if, if people are fooling around like the last time where the people were entering all the wrong statistics in the thing, um, then I have to go back and rewatch my broadcast of the entire game and um, be able to enter all the stats in properly into the computer. And that's super time consuming. That's like an extra like two, three, four hours worth of time that um, shouldn't be happening if the person enters the stats wrong. So, so yeah, it's all, it's all time dependent. Yep, just couldn't trust Arizona. It's a lot of bad losses with them this year. They had a quad three loss. That's kind of, kind of uncharted territory for a two seed to have like a, a loss of that bad caliber to have a quad three loss. Yeah, I'm hoping so too that I can do it for tomorrow. They play in the late game, so uh, that one I'm not much worried about. So I'm. Um, I, I should be back in time, hopefully, for the late game because my lacrosse game's at 1 and then around like 3 o'clock, 3.15 after I finish, I have to write up that article and then write up the uh, women's lacrosse road article too. The other guys at baseball because they have uh, one guy running the department and they got a bunch of games tomorrow. They play in the spring. They have baseball, softball, lacrosse, and uh, field hockey. Hey, what's good, Kara? Welcome back in the stream. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, it's probably more so the UConn one. Um, it's either I'll miss that one or join it in progress, depending on when I finish. Because that, that's the earlier game. And it won't tip off until like 8.50 for Alabama-Clemson, since that's the late game. Probably by the time they finish the UConn game, it might be more so like 9 o'clock that they tip off. I, I wouldn't imagine myself spending like six hours writing two articles unless there's a big like uh, unless there's major problems getting stats during that day for like the road game or so. But it's like mid season now. It's not like week one because when I wrote the article in week one, I had to wait two hours because the people wrote in the stats since it was the season opener. But now they should ha have it like. They should they should be able to know what they're doing at all the sites. Top scorer for Houston is just six at halftime. Javon Roberts, LJ Cryer, Cryer with six. Top scorer, the game's got seven with Jared McCain right now. Dukes made three threes. They're three for nine from the perimeter. Nine turnovers compared to eight made field goals by Duke. Yeah, this has been just a, a tough defensive grind of a match. And then Houston has yet to even make a three tonight. Seems like this halftime's been long, too. We're eventually going to be coming back here for the second half. Thanks all for patiently waiting. Wow. <laughs> Kentucky held UCLA to seven points in the first half. Yeah, there was a game, I think it was Pacific, who scored in the single digits against Pepperdine in the WCC tournament. Pacific was awful this year. They won like 6-26. The final score of that game was 
102 to 43. Yeah, yeah. The score at halftime was was Pepperdine 56, Pacific nine. Yikes. So Houston's really going to have to figure this out the second half. Jamal Shedd left the game in the first half, rolled his ankle, hasn't returned ever since, and things look miscombobulated for Houston offensively in the floor. Just crushing for Houston because they've been so close every single year. Consistently, second weekend team. So, so close, but injuries have just taken a toll on their season. They had some key guys miss time this year due to injury. They go with like an eight-man rotation, and uh, this is not a good sign for Houston. Right now, Shed is not in his game attire for Shed. So, Shed is on the bench, rolled his ankle. That That's just a huge blow for Houston. They, they, they're going to have to come out with like a motivational speech or something at halftime with their star down and if they win this game man like that that's huge there for Houston if they win this game resilient they did it against Texas A&M but they have to play a full game it's not like they're playing like an extra minute and uh, plus overtime for Houston here we go second half of action Houston down by one with a basketball sharp has it at the edge of the midcourt logo Sharp at the right wing perimeter, lobs it off top of the key. Javier Francis dribbles up, floats it up over the top. Couldn't convert on the alley oop, but they got fouled. Two shots coming up in the free throw line by Houston. All right, showing something here without Shed on the floor. Sharp was the one who was initiating the offense that time, and two free throws coming up here by Javier Francis. Two shots by Francis. First one, no good. He was the one that airballed the free throw the last time. I mean, free throws has not been their strong suit as a team this season. Second free throw by Francis. Got it. We're tied. 23-23 right now. We start off the second half. First possession here for Duke. McCain has it around the perimeter. Handoff Filipowski drives down the lane with a left hand. Lays it up and in. Up and in off the backboard for two by Filipowski. Kimberly, welcome in. Um, I'm hoping to do so for tomorrow. I got a game during the afternoon for lacrosse, and then I have to write up the post-game articles for it. So I'm hoping to do it tomorrow if I'm able to get back in time. I, I should, unless there's like... Um, some issues with the statistics being generated from the games. Deep two is good by Houston. We're tied right now, 25-25. Back and forth, back and forth. Game starting to pick up here currently. First minute plus of action of the second half. Top of the key, Mark Mitchell dribbles up, swings it out to the right wing for Duke Proctor. On top, off to McCain. McCain. Over to Filipowski, outside the Roach. Roach at the free throw circle. Spin move, rises for the jumper. Got it. Off the 17-footer, able to stick it for Jeremy Roach. 27-25 as we are matching buckets right now. Playing into the favor of Duke. Duke, an efficient shooting team this season. Houston, led by their defense. At the right elbow, it's Roberts. Roberts, baseline dribble, working on Mitchell. With position, Roberts floats it up. Able to put it in over Filipowski for the basket. Matching buckets for Houston here without Shed on the floor. Just above 18 minutes left to go. Slows down the tempo for Duke. Top of the key with Proctor. At the right wing, Filipowski. Filipowski, top of the key. He's made a three in this game so far. Roach drives downhill to the rim. Roach swatted out of bounds by Houston. Good block right there by Francis. Yeah, it doesn't look good. He's not even suited in uniform right now on the bench. Uh, yeah, this is this is not good. Corner three. I'll give the update during the timeout. Missed by Duke. Offensive rebound back to Duke, though. Inside with some space. Roach buries the two. 29-27 as we go back and forth. Robert, welcome back in, man. He's taking Duke. Hit us up in the chat. Who guys like to win this one? Duke or Houston? 
Houston with possession as they slow it down, trailing by two. Bounce pass goes over to the right elbow. Jawad Roberts working on Mark Mitchell. Shot clock's down to 12. Roberts powers his way down low and floated up. The shot gets fouled. And he'll shoot two coming up at the free to line for Roberts. And this is not a good sign right here for Houston right now. Jamal Shedd. This is a video on the CBS Sports College Basketball Twitter page. Jamal Shedd appears to be using a scooter after going to the locker room. So that is not a good sign there for Houston. Yikes. Using a scooter for Shed. Just devastating. They've been so close every single year. Just so, so devastating. If Houston wins this game, man, like, absolutely a resilience if they win this game somehow, some way. First free throw is good by Roberts. Nine points and five rebounds by Roberts. Second free throw, no good. Bricked off the back room. Filipowski came down with a defensive board. Steven on the street, welcome in. He's taking Duke for this one. One point lead by Duke, 17 minutes left to go in the second half. Duke with the possession. Proctor sends it across the floor off the Roach. Roach starting to take over lately. That guard experience by the senior. Spin move, Filipowski kicks out to the corner. Here's a three, Proctor. Got the roll, it's good. Makes the triple at the left corner. 32-28, largest lead in the night for the Blue Devils. Houston looking to respond right here. Houston with Cryer. Cryer up big. Mid-block floats up the shot. Able to get it inside for two more. Back and forth, back and forth. Houston right now is hanging in this one. They're attacking. They are attacking, getting their twos. Their inability to make a three is haunting them right now. Though They're 0 for 4 from the pro. Their Duke is 4 for 12. Duke has it at the top. Filipowski up fake. Dribbles downhill. Got it stripped out of bounds. It's last touch by the Cougars. It's going to stay Duke basketball. 16-11 left to play in a second. Duke by two, looking for the inbounds. Bounce pass, right corner, elevating for the three. Proctor, no good. Missed off the back rim. Rebound secured here by Houston. LJ Cryer crosses the midcourt logo. Cryer defended at the left wing by McCain. Slows down the tempo, and there's 16 minutes left to go. Thanks for joining in, Jason. Enjoy the rest of your night, man. Top of the key here, Cryer. They're perfect three for three this half. Hand off, Cryer. Cryer drives. Slows up the runner. No good off the glass. Offensive rebound. Houston, second chance. Able to get the score off the turnaround. Second chance points are good. We're even 32 all. Javier Francis off the putback for the Cougars. Five ties and a lead change tonight. Largest lead, Houston by eight, Duke by four. The pass off the roll down. Mitchell trying to throw down the dunk, got rejected off the back rim. Second chance, no good. Pinwheels around, and it goes down with Houston's basketball. Cougars with a possession. What a great defensive stop right there by Houston somehow, some way on the defensive board. Sharp dribbles, drives, pass off the roller, and got it blocked on underneath. We got a foul call picked up. On a shot, charge the Duke. It'll be two free throws coming up at the line for Houston to see if they can break the tie with Jawan Roberts. And we'll take the media timeout right now. Just above 15 minutes left to go in the second half. It's tied up 32-32. What a game currently. Scoring picking up. This is good for Houston because they're scoring points without Shed. Like, they're hanging in against Duke right now without Shed. And Houston's actually outscoring Duke in the second half, 10-9. I feel like it benefits Duke, though, because they've been scoring more. It's a really good sign for Houston that they're scoring, but um, can Houston put together stops in the, defensive ha in the second half here? Can they put together stops defensively because Duke's starting to Crack down Houston's defense more and more and more throughout the course of this game. Wow, Wemby with 40 and 20 tonight. Holy smoke, 61 points for Brunson. Wow, and the Heat won by 61. Yeah, NC State going to take on a winner of this one, an 11 seed. And um, if, if they get Houston, Shed might not be playing in that game. 
If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified for future live streams. Man, just crushing for Houston with Shed getting injured in the first half. But if Houston comes out of this and wins this, like, man, like this Cougars team is tough as nails. Like, they got the greatest culture and um, all of college basketball, if, if they get this one, I mean, what that does for their culture even more, like, holy smokes. Like, they, they've been down multiple players this year, but this this team can win games no matter what. 32 wins, playing like an eight-man rotation shorthanded this season for, uh, for most of the year. They've gone nine guys tonight, so they've gone a, an extra man from the bench compared to the Texas A&M game. Nine by Jerron Roberts has the chance to add in 10 and 11 at the free to line shooting two upcoming. Francis has seven. Cryer up to eight. Cryer banked that buzzer beater at the buzzer. I mean, that, that's massive. If it comes down to Houston winning this game by one, one or two points, you look back at the, the buzzer beater off the floater by Cryer banked it in at the buzzer. That could be a difference in this game here. Duke's top score is Kyle Filipowski. He has eight with seven rebounds. And then seven points between Proctor and McCain. Right now, the foul trouble looks like this. Mark Mitchell, three personal fouls, two by Filipowski. And for Houston, doing a pretty good job of evading, uh, avoiding foul trouble, unlike the Texas A&M game tonight. Two personal fouls by Roberts, two by Dunn off the bench. Creighton leads Tennessee 35-34 at the half. Wow, they're not going to call in on the shot. I, I thought they were going to be shooting free throws upcoming. The referees did not count it on the shot by Mark Mitchell on the foul. So they said it was on the floor. So this will be inbound Houston as they dribble on their knee. Cryer gives it over to Sharp. Sharp floats up the shot. No good. Missed off the mark. Off. It's a rebound. Control by Houston. Deflected. And it's touched out of bounds by Wilson. Turned over Houston. Yeah, my bad about that. I thought it was going to be shots coming up. They, they rolled out on the floor, though, by the, by the refs instead of the shooting motion. Duke with a possession. Duke's attempted 11 shots this half. Houston with just six. Houston's four for six. Duke four for 11. Filipowski passes to the backdoor cutter. And Ryan Young throws it down with a two-handed flush. Back and forth, back and forth. 34-32 with 14 and a half left. Houston with a possession. Out to the right wing sharp. Lobs it over to the elbow. They move it inside to Key Francis. Lost the handle. Turns it over. Goes back to Duke here with a possession. Up the floor to Roach now at the right wing. Roach sends it out top of the key over to Proctor. Proctor towards his right hand off Roach. As we approach the 14 minute mark left to play. Top of the key Roach. Guarded 101. Slides it off to Proctor right wing. Proctor shot clock down to 10. Top of the key McCain. Out to his left to Roach. Dribbles downhill. Puts up the shot. Connects on it. 36-32, two-possession lead here for Duke. Houston's been in a couple, couple scoring droughts tonight. This is not a time to do so. We'll wreck your team right here, right now. Cryer drives, bounce pass, try to thread the needle, got intercepted. Poor decision, and right now, Houston, without their main ball handler, is struggling. Struggling, struggling, and uh, cracking under pressure, trailing by four. Duke looking for another efficient possession. Top of the key, Filipowski sends it off to his right to McCain. At the top, over to Proctor. Outside, Filipowski up big. Dribbles down the lane, shovels underneath. Off the fingertips of Young, he turns it over. 13-13 left to go. Filipowski with a great shovel, but Ryan Young not anticipating it. And they weren't on the same page for the two big fellas. Houston has been outscored 26-16 since the shed injury. No momentum going for them as they need to get something here if they want to pick up the victory. In a scoring drought of almost three minutes, Floater skips around and it goes in. Now will stop that scoring drought. LJ Cry are able to float up the two. Taking a lot of tough shots right now. Shed going to look on right now 
with his team and hope that his team has enough in this game to advance over to the Elite Eight to take on NC State. McCain at the right wing sends it off to Filipowski. Filipowski backs his way out to the top. It goes over to the corner. Roach with a three. Rips it through the shoot with a triple. Big time shot for Jeremy Roach. 39-34 Blue Devils. There's that guard experience by Roach in the backcourt. Done. Has it here at the edge of the midcourt logo. Sends it off to Cryer. Cryer. Step back. Three in the air. Got it a go. It's good for the triple. That's the first main three of the game by Houston. It comes with just above 12 minutes left to play in the second half. LJ Cryer. A big time perimeter spark there. Duke with a possession. Filipowski at the left wing. Filipowski dribbles towards his right top of the free throw circle. Takes the three. Filipowski, no good. That's a poor shot early on in the shot clock. Rebound goes to Houston. Chance to tie with a two under 12 minutes left to go in the second half. Houston's going to slow it down. A bucket here to tie with a two. Chance to take the lead with a three. Top of the key, Malik Wilson. Signals the offense. Coming off the ball is Sharp. Sharp being covered closely to Wilson. Towards his right. Eight on the shot clock. Wilson, double team. Wilson gets it away. Off the roll down baseline. Jay, they take it. No good. Missed off the mark. It came up short by Francis. Duke comes up with a basketball. 11-20 left to play. Duke's going to slow it down in the gritty defensive battle here between these two teams. Houston 6 for 9 this half. Duke is 7 for 15 shooting. Roach kick out wing. Catch. Fire. 3. Proctor well off the mark. Offensive rebound. Filipowski to the outside. It goes back into the hands to Roach. He's going to slow it down. 5 in the shot clock. Gotta go. Gotta go if you're Duke. Roach lost it. Bobbled in a reach and foul. Picked up. Charge to Houston with 1.1 on the shot clock. Oh, boy. That's a terrible foul right there. 1.1. They had a double team defending Roach at the elbow. 39-37. So we're down to under 11 left to go. We'll take the timeout. What a battle. Clutch, welcome back in the stream. Thanks for joining back in, man. If you're new in the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring the notification bell if you guys enjoy the content here. I cover basketball action, play-by-play, -play, college hoops, NBA games as well. LJ Cryer's up to 13. He is the top scorer in this game tonight. Everybody else is single digits. Nine points by Roach, the leading scorer for Duke. Eight points by Filipowski. I mean, this would take a miracle for Houston to win. They're without Jabal Shad hanging in now, down by one. Quick update on the Creighton Tennessee score. Tennessee starting to pull away a little bit. 45 39 with 16 12 left to go. Yeah, Houston is right there. That that was a bad foul they just committed reaching in. There was 1.1 1 .1 seconds uh, seconds left in the shot clock. Duke is just out handling Houston here in the glass. Houston's such a good offensive rebounding team, but Duke's got all the offensive rebounds lately. Duke is plus five in the glass, 27 to 22. It seems like a whole lot more. And um, Duke, Duke's shredding Houston in total shot, shots. Duke has like 18 shots this half, and Houston only has 10. Foul trouble looks like this. Mark Mitchell with three. Filipowski has two. Everybody else with one or zero. Houston's not in much foul trouble compared to their last game. Two personal fouls each between Roberts and Dunn, who's coming off the bench. So crushing 
for Houston, tweeted by CBS Sports College Basketball. Uh, Jamal Shedd, he, he was on a... So after the locker room, he appeared to be using a scooter after going to the locker room, just crushing. Just so, so sad. This team has made run after run every single year in the tournament, but it's always seems to be an injury that just takes them down, unfortunately. Jeremy Roach will head to the free to line shoot two. So the referees roll or wow, he's he's gonna shoot three. I thought he was inside the arc there. He's gonna shoot three on this shot. That's even worse. One point one seconds left to go on the shot clock and Houston committed a foul from the perimeter. So this is gonna be three shots of the free to line by Roach. First one is good. So the referee said both of his feet were behind the three point line. First two Good at the line, 41-37. Third free throw by Roach, and got the bounce. All three are good. Five-point lead for Duke here with under 11 left to go. Houston looking to get some sort of firepower. LJ Cryer with 11 since the shed injury. Rest of the team only has 10 right now. Cryer at the left wing. Shooting 39% from three this season. A transfer from Baylor on top. Sharp, up fake, dribble drive inside. Dump off underneath and Houston lost it on the bounds. It was off the hands of Jawan Roberts underneath the hoop. Critical turnovers right now with Houston. I mean, they don't have anybody who can facilitate the offense with Shed on the bench. That's just crushing. Tennessee starting to pull away 47-39. to 39. Right now for Tennessee with 15 and a half left. Four turnovers in the second half for Houston. They had four in the entire first half. And we're not even midway through the second half here. Filipowski powering his way. Filipowski at the rim. Goes up and he gets followed. And he'll have two coming up at the line. This game starting to slip away from Houston right now. 10-16 left to go. And Creighton, that game starting to slip away from them. 50-39 to in favor of Tennessee. Filipowski, 8-8 eight and eight tonight. Two shots here at the line. First one. Got the bounce. It's good. Second free throw, Filipowski, no good, bricked off the back rim, rebound secured for Ramon Walker for Houston. I think if you're Houston, you got to take it faster up the floor. I know they love to play that slower tempo, but you got to realize they're down by six right now in this game. Largest lead tonight, up by six for Duke. At the elbow with Jerron Roberts. Roberts, a lot of guys just not moving. Off ball, Roberts backs his way, trying to do it himself. Skips it out to the wing, and we have a reach and fall picked up. Charge to Ryan Young of Duke. So, now we'll stop the clock now. 9.54 left to go. It's been a really, really slow tempo game tonight. First of 50 might take this one. Houston underneath, looking to get the inbounds. Outside to the right corner. Baseline dribble for Houston. Couple up fakes and they will draw the shooting foul. Two shots coming up here by Demarion Dunn as he draws the contact charge to Jared McCain who picks up the personal foul. Wow, Tennessee is really exploding. 55-39 to 39, Tennessee. By the way, that's a Creighton team that, that beat UConn by 19 points. Back in February. Demarion Dunn yet to score tonight. At the free to line shooting two. Critical free throws right now for Houston. First shot's good. Second shot here by Dunn at the line. It is up and it is good. That's a big free throws. Four point game here with under 10 minutes left. It's Proctor who crosses midcourt. Dukes yet to make a field goal in the last three minutes.
Down low, Filipowski powers his way to the bucket. Right pass, Roberts up and then off the glass. Scores for two. Yeah, a lot more minutes um, since Shed went down. It's been a lot of Malik Wilson, number eight. He's been like the main ball handler a lot. So he's been playing a lot of minutes. And also Dunn has received an uptick in minutes as well. Hand off Ramon Walker. Also on the floor, getting some more minutes too. Cryer at the wing. Six in the shot clock here. We're down to nine minutes remaining. Cryer moves it out to the right wing. Catch and fire. Three. Oh, they hit it. Ramon Walker lets it rain from downtown. It's a three-point game. That's an assist there by LJ Cryer. Second made three tonight for Houston. That's a big basket. Just two for six from the perimeter. Dukes five for 16. Major, major three right there to give them a little bit of momentum. Duke will cross midcourt. This game is slow tempo. Proctor has that the March Madness logo. Proctor puts the ball into the hands of Filipowski. Now on the top of the key off to Young. Slides it off to the left wing. Goes down to the low block. Filipowski backs his way. Working on Roberts underneath. No good. Missed the shot. Rebound control by Houston. Houston started to pick it up here defensively. The Cougars pushing tempo a little bit faster as well. Top of the key. Roberts. Hand off. Cryer. Free throw circle. Drives. Downhill. Cryer. Baseline. Outside to the wing. Up fake. Walker. Handoff. Goes to Wilson. Wilson now running the point. 12 in the shot clock. 8 minutes left to go. Houston with a possession. Top of the key. Ramon Walker. Right, that's Malik Wilson outside. Here's a skip pass. Three quarter. No good. Missed by Walker. Rebound ripped away by Duke with Ryan Young. Under eight minutes left. Let us know out in the chat who you guys like to win this one here. Duke or Houston. Type it in. First of 50 potentially could win this one. Duke eight for 18 this half. Houston seven for 11. Duke slows it down. Roach. At the March Madness logo. Dribbles up now. Top of the key. Roach. Eight in the shot clock. Crossover. Jumper. 18 footer. Deep two. No good. Filipowski. Put back. Contacted and followed. And he'll shoot two. Um, so we're going to take a timeout right here. Jamal Shedd has yet to come back in this game. Timeout on the floor. Media timeout with under eight minutes left. So if you guys are just joining in. Jamal Shedd got injured. In the first half, has yet to come back into the game. Uh, looked like a pretty severe injury. Rolled his ankle. He was using a scooter going out of the locker room, and he was in a he was in a sweatshirt over on the bench. So it, it doesn't look likely that he's going to come back for shed. So so he hasn't come back into the game yet for shed. Uh, welcome in, uh, SMK Stringer in the channel. Welcome aboard. Feel free to let us uh, know out on the stream who you guys like to win, Duke or Houston. Smash the thumbs up if you guys are new. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. And yeah, just crushing there for uh, Jamal Shedd. Just, just absolutely crushing. If Houston somehow finds their way to win this game, I mean, that's phenomenal without their best player. I mean, that really says a lot about their culture, which they have an incredible culture already for Houston, but that's just another level playing the entire second half without them and um, like ha halfway in the first half without them, like the final 30 minutes, and somehow if they come up with this win, I mean, that that's insane. 57 to 42, Tennessee leads Creighton by 15 with under 12 and a half left to go. This game's much more closer here. Houston doing everything possible defensively. This game has really slowed down. Both of these teams are just sl just using as much shot clock as possible. Jeremy Roach, 12 points, 11 points by Filipowski. He's got 9 rebounds. And then one player in double figure scoring for Houston, 13 by LJ Cryer. This is a battle right now, though. Houston hanging in. Hanging in this game currently. 
It was super low scoring at halftime. It was 23-22 Duke at the half. Actually, Houston shooting the ball better than Duke. 43% by Houston, 38% by Duke. Duke's made five threes, though. Houston, it took them all the way to the 12-minute to the mark left to go in this game for them to finally make a three. Three-point game. Duke will get the inbound here underneath. Looking to inbound and... Did he get the timeout? Off in time here for Duke. That's the question. John Shire was coming in. They did not successfully inbound. Did they get a timeout in time? No, they did not. That's going to be a five-second violation charge to Duke. John Shire was running right towards the official. Couldn't get the timeout in time. That's a big, big miscue by Duke. Houston with some mo momentum on their side. 7-10 left to go. If Duke loses that this game, that's a big reason why right there. Botch possession with a five-second violation. Jerron Roberts takes it to the rim with a spin move and a hook, and he scores. Good for two. 45-44. Under seven minutes left to go. Anybody's game right now, hit us up in the chat. Who you guys like to win? Type it in. Duke or Houston? Roach sends it off to Filipowski. Left wing. Hand off to Roach. Roach dribbles up left baseline. Outside finds Filipowski. Filipowski up fake. Shot clock down to eight. Around the perimeter. Takes the three. Filipowski rainbow. Oh, he hits it. Kyle Filipowski, the big fella, delivers on the three in the rainbow stroke. 48-44, 14 and 9 by Filipowski tonight. Houston with a ball. Emmanuel Sharp at the right wing. He went off for a career high 30 against Texas A&M on Sunday. Today he's been held in check though. Over to Roberts, fires his way to the rim. No good, missed a shot from point blank range. Late whistle picked up on the floor. It's charged to Duke on the foul. And this will stop the time. Down the 6.14 left to go. And this will be free throws coming up. So Houston gets followed in the layup motion. There was a late whistle there by the referees. And this will be two shots here at the free throw line for Jawan Roberts. Six personal follow to half by Duke. Thir three personal follows by Houston this half. Roberts, first one's no good. Free throws are crushing them. They're just not a good free throw shooting team. Houston is 6 for 13 tonight at the free throw line. I mean, they're crushing their opportunities by bricking free throws. Jawan Roberts with 11. He'll have a second free throw upcoming. Looking to put it to a one possession game. It is up. It is good. 48-45 right now. Duke with a possession. Proctor. Crosses the midcourt logo. Ryan Young in deep foul trouble now. Four points and four personal fouls. Top of the key, Filipowski. He's been massive from three-point range in this game. And the pass in the corner gets intercepted. Houston picks up the steal in the corner by Jerron Roberts. Jumps the route. Houston with a chance to tie with a three. Chance to pull with a one with a two. 12th turnover the game by Duke. Cryer at the left wing. Brings along a double team. 15 on the shot clock for LJ Cryer. Moves on top off to Roberts. Roberts dribbles towards his right. Roberts now at the low block. Roberts double teamed. Roberts off the pivot underneath. Tough shot. No good off the back rim. And he got fouled once again. It's on Filipowski. Two more free throws coming up at the line by Juwan Roberts. Filipowski picks up his third. What a game, folks. Houston again hanging in. Just a 52.5% free throw shooter. So if you're Duke, you can live with this right now. Roberts the last time split the free throws. He had an air ball during the first half of the free throw line. First one here is good. Two-point game. Seventh personal fall this half committed by Duke. Houston with just three. So it'll be bonus throughout. And then double bonus if Duke reaches 10. Second free throw, no good. Hit the rim short. Free throw is going to cost Houston this game. 
Duke came up with a rebound. Three personal falls by Jawan Roberts in foul trouble for Houston. Four by Young. Three by Filipowski. Three by Mitchell as Duke will burn a timeout. Five and a half left to go. Duke by two. 48-46. What a game. If you guys are new in the stream, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell. If you guys would like to be notified for future live streams here on the channel, I cover basketball action, play-by-play, -play, college sheep streams, NBA streams as well. We've got almost 100 on the channel. You guys are absolute legends for hanging in here tonight. And uh, wow, just an incredible uh, closing competitive game. Unfortunate what happened to Houston star player in the first half. I mean, it's crushing. Um, that Jamal Shedd went down. But somehow Houston is right now hanging in. Hanging in this entire game. By the way, Creighton's trying to come back. Tennessee had a 15-point lead. It's now down to 10. 62-52 with 9.22 left to go there. It's going to have to be a defensive masterpiece clinic by Kelvin Sampson and his squad for the final 530 if they want to have any sort of comeback in this one for Houston. Duke's plus 5 in the glass, 30-25. to 25. Houston's defense is limiting Duke to 39.5% shooting. Houston is at 43% in this game. Going into halftime, Duke had more turnovers than they did when made made field goals. Duke had made 8 shots with nine turnovers going into the half. Right now, Duke has turned it over 12 times. Houston just eight times tonight. And also, Houston, I mean, if they're making free throws, they're winning this game. Houston's left eight points off at the free throw line. They're eight for 16 at the free throw line. Big wrap on the stream. Welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it. And that was an incredible game last night. Hopefully, we finish off with an incredible game here. Only a two-point game right now. If Houston's able to come away with this, like, oh my goodness, Houston, this this speaks to the culture of their program, and like, wow, that it, it will be just sensational for for them to beat the odds for Houston if they're able to come out of this because it looked like they were completely done once Shed got injured. They they had no sort of rhythm offensively for them, and right now they're just down by two. Down by two despite only making 50% of their free throws. Yeah, injuries have been a crusher this year for Houston. 48-46. Seven personal fouls committed by Duke. Three by Houston. Here we go. Duke will get the inbound coming up. Out of the timeouts. Jared McCann, far side of the floor, will be the inbound passer. He's in the court with Young, Filipowski, Proctor, and Roach. Inbound goes to Proctor. Proctor has it. Edge of the March Madness logo off the Filipowski, top of the key. Filipowski dribbles up to the right elbow. Filipowski, 14 on the shot clock, powers his way, puts up the shot, hit the spot. It's good, plus one. Kyle Filipowski going to shoot an and one coming up with a free to line for Duke. 50 to 46. Brilliant. Possession coming back from the timeout drawn up by head coach John Shire. Getting your big the basketball, powering his way, bouncing bodies off of Javier Francis, and he scored over him. 16 and 9 tonight for Filipowski. Duke making the majority of their free throws as well. 8 for 11. Houston just 8 for 16. Mark Mitchell checks back onto the floor. Five seventeen left to go. One shot by Filipowski. No good. Bricked it off the back rim. Tipped up. Battle for the rebound. Duke taps it right back for the offensive rebounds. 
So it's another opportunity for Duke. Filipowski went down. Able to get back up on his feet, though. Approaching five minutes left to go. Plus four to offensive glass for Duke. 12-8. to eight. That's unheard of for Houston. Houston 0-4 and four this season when trailing with five minutes left to go. About to force a tie if they couldn't. Another shot high arcing. Missed off the mark by Roach. Houston collects the defensive rebound by Roberts. Under five minutes left. Down by four for Houston. Duke the first one of 50 today. Will it be enough? Emmanuel Sharp crosses the midcourt logo. He's been held in check tonight. Sharp with just four total points. Into the hands to Cryer. The top scorer with 13. Cryer towards his right off to Sharp at the right wing. Sends it off right corner here for Houston. Five of the shot clock. You got to go. Hand off Cryer. Baseline dribble. Attacks over Filipowski. Throats up the runner. And he got it a go. It's good for two for LJ. Oh, with a shot right there. It's a two-point game. 4.15 remaining. Duke slows down tempo on their side. 20 in the shot clock. LJ Cryer's got 15 on 7 for 13, doing everything possible for H-Town. Proctor, 8 on the shot clock, under 4 minutes left to go. Hand off to Roach, towards his right around the perimeter, sends it on top. Proctor, Proctor dribbles up, rises for the J, 15-footer, and he connects on it. Tyrese Proctor, a big time 2 for Duke. 52-48. Houston down by four with a possession. The Cougars cross the midcourt logo, hanging in this entire game. Bounce pass out to the right wing. It is Francis. Francis, hand off to Cryer. Cryer looking to do it again. Cryer pressured, and Duke comes up with a steal. Cryer just turned it over. Duke will slow it down. 3.15 left to go. Blue Devils with a four-point lead, slowing down tempo. Houston looking to force a miss right here. Come up with a rebound at the left wing. Roach, 12 in the shot clock. Roach slows it down. Three minutes left to play. Approaching the mark. Seven in the shot clock at the left wing. Baseline dribble. Roach bounce pass underneath. Mitchell puts it up. Puts it in. It is good for two, but he traveled. They're going to take away the two. It will go back to Houston. Mark Mitchell travels with a basketball. It's going to be Houston ball coming up after the media timeout. Oh, what a big possession here. There's still signs of life for the Cougars. Instead of a six-point lead, it's a four-point game. And Houston will have the ball coming up out of the timeout with 2.56 left. Major, major turnover right there. Walking in the key with Mark Mitchell. And that is now the 13th turnover of the game by Duke. Houston hanging in right now. Going to make some shots because the time's going to wind off the clock right on you. And that means pushing the ball faster in tempo instead of slowing down the pace every single possession. LJ Cryer's got 15, leading the way for Houston. Can he have another big moment tonight? Hey, what's good, Isaiah, on the stream? Welcome in. I took Houston in this one. Unfortunately, uh, Jamal shed in that injury, really crushing uh, that chance right there. It will be just remarkable if Houston somehow comes out of this but wow um I mean this is this is Duke's game to take ever since Shed went down just absolutely crushing for Houston and uh their fans I feel you guys because every single year like Houston in the tournament just so much goes in to their to their team every single year and just seems like injuries just take a toll every single year it's just crushing for them if you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams on the channel. And uh, Houston will have the basketball coming up out of the timeout. 2.56 left to play. Three timeouts by Houston remaining, two timeouts by Duke. Houston's in the bonus, but they're bricking free throws. 8 for 16 at the free throw line. I, I think even if you're Duke, you're, you're up by four, putting a bad free throw shooter at the line. It's... If you're able to get a player out there that doesn't have many fouls um, to commit one, if the ball goes into the hands of that player, you, you could potentially hack them too. If you're Duke, we'll see what happens coming up. 16 by Filipowski. He's got 9 rebounds, 12 points by Roach with 3 assists tonight. Roach has turned it over 4 times, 13 turnovers by Duke, including a 5-second violation, have allowed Houston to hang in. Houston with just 9 turnovers. 
15 points by LJ Cryer. He's shooting 7 for 13 from the floor. And uh, Jawan Roberts has 13 points with 7 rebounds. Yeah, hopefully. I think Joe Mazzulla's coaching is really holding the Celtics back. Um, simple fundamental basketball that they just can't get can't get down with Porzingis dropping in coverage, allowing Murray to get um, penetration down low on him and hitting shots. I mean, that just can't happen. Uh, all the backpedaling defensively by Porzingis. Struggling to box out. Just super fun, fun, fundamental stuff that Joe Mazzola just struggles to reiterate with the team. Like, you got to know that stuff. It's simple fourth grade level stuff. Here we go. Back to action. 254 left to play. Houston gets the inbound. They're going faster up the floor here. Sharp with only four points tonight for the Cougars. Top of the key for Houston with Demarion Dunn. Dunn sends it off to the right wing to Cryer. Cryer been a player of the game for Houston with 15. Going to have to have another big shot in him. Crossover. Had the ball poke loose. Diving the hardwood. Gets intercepted by Duke with a steal by Proctor. Big time steal right there by Tyrese Proctor. That's the 10th turnover coming in by Houston tonight. And that's what would not happen if Shed was on the floor in crunch time. He would not turn that over. LJ Cryer just coughed it up. Duke. Looking for the knockout punch right here. Bounce pass, Filipowski. Baseline, off fake. Filipowski sends it out to the wing. Five of the shot clock for Duke. Filipowski made a big three earlier. Dribble drive inside. Filipowski lost the handle. Out of bounds. And it is a turnover committed by Duke. Shot clock violation. Filipowski lost the dribble. Fumbled, stumbled, and lost it out of bounds. Turnover by Duke with 203 left. It keeps Houston hanging in the game right now. Houston down by four with two minutes. They have possession. Two and a half minutes scoring drought. Can the answer right here? Top of the key, done. Dribbles towards the right elbow, done. Bounce pass off the roll down. Down low, outside back to Dunn. Top of the key, 10 on the shot clock. Dribble straight line, Dunn. Contact, puts it up. N no call, offensive rebound. Put back, not there for Houston. Defensive rebound, hauled in by Roach in the corner. Minute 35 left to go. Duke with the basketball here. Going to slow down the clock once again. Tennessee leads by four. 68-64 with four minutes left to go against Creighton. Filipowski sends it off to Roach. A bucket here would win the game most likely. Roach off big jumper. Mid-range Roach. Oh, he hits it. Jeremy Roach. Bang, bang. Big time shot and a timeout taken by Houston. Another one seed about to go down, it looks like. Big time a roach tonight on the floor for the Blue Devils. 113 left to go. Jeremy Roach, mid range in the key, drills the two. What a game he is at. He is up to 14 tonight by Roach. A major, major J right there to go up by six. If you're new on the channel, smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Duke looking to take on NC State in the Elite Eight. Looking to get their revenge on NC State. NC State eliminated Duke from the ACC tournament on March 14th, 74-69. Duke won on the road at NC State on March 4th, 79-64. What a game. Duke finding ways to win this game. A point guard play, the difference maker with Jeremy Roach. Point guard play in the tournament, just unfortunate with Shed. I mean, if he was out here, this game might be a whole different story. Really, really different story. The turnovers and crunch time have crushed the Cougars. Fifty four forty eight six point game with a minute thirteen left. Houston will get the inbound, but that may have been a dagger in this one. As the clock strikes midnight here on the East Coast, and the Duke Blue Devils are a minute thirteen away from facing their in state rival, the NC State Wolfpack, on Sunday. Inbound for Houston. Houston with just three points in the previous five minutes plus. 
Top of the key, LJ Cryer sends it off down low into the hands of Roberts. Puts up the shot, no good. Off his fingertips, shot to save it. Pinned it off of McCain out of bounds. Down to 59.8 left to play. Just super inefficient for Houston. Super, super inefficient for them. Roberts came crashing down into the camera person. Houston underneath will get the inbound. They need something quick. Can't be dilly-dallying with the basketball. Inbound goes to Roberts. Handoff. Done. Shot clock's winding down. 54 seconds left. Done. Over to the wing. Sharp. Sharp. Turns the corner. Drives. Slices the feathers. Double clutch. And he got it. And one coming up in the free throw line by Emmanuel Sharp. That's a big one. Three-point play potentially incoming for Houston. Sharp absorbs the contact from Ryan Young plus the foul. Four-point game. Huge. Huge right there by Emmanuel Sharp. 48.7 seconds left to play. What a battle tonight. Ryan Young has just followed out. So he is done for the game. Ryan Young has just fouled out, picks up his fifth. Foul trouble looks like this. Three personal fouls each between Mitchell and Filipowski. Young just picked up his fifth. He is out. For Houston, three personal fouls charged to Roberts. Everybody else with two, one, or zero. Houston needs a miracle indeed. 54 to 50. One free throw covered up at the line by Emmanuel Sharp to see if he can pull his team one in three. Sharp, looking to send this to a three-point game. 84.7% at the free throw line. Free throw is good, right down the middle. 54-51. Duke had an inbound five-second violation earlier. This time they find the open Proctor off the inbound. Shot clock down to 25-44 in the game clock. So Houston is looking to force a miss here by Duke because there's around a 20-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Duke has the possession. Shot clock is down to 10. Game clock's down to 30. Top of the key, Roach. Been a player of the game. Pass off the roll down. Filipowski, 15-footer. No good. Skipped around the rim and out. Rebound, Houston. Houston with two timeouts. 20 seconds left to get the basketball. Sharp up the floor. 15 seconds. And they'll burn a timeout. 15.9. Kyle Filipowski for the dagger to win. Nada. Houston with an opportunity coming up to see if they can tie. 54-51. What a game here, folks. All the odds stacked against Houston. Shed goes down. Down by one possession. Filipowski to win. And if Duke somehow, someway loses this game, the ghost of Kyle Filipowski in the rim, that's going to haunt him for ages if somehow Duke chokes this game away. It was halfway down and it spud out. Halfway into the rim and it spud out. Filipowski's jumper at the free throw circle. In insane sequence right there. Filipowski wide open, missed it. Halfway down, spud out. Houston got the defensive rebound. Houston needs a miracle. 16 seconds left. Cryer, 39% three-point shooter. Sharp, 37% from three. The top two perimeter guys in the team, they're just two for seven from three-point range in this game. Does Houston find a miracle tonight to force overtime? Here we go. One timeout remaining by Houston, two by Duke. 15.9 seconds remaining. Houston, far side of the floor, about to get the inbound. Cryer will be the inbound passer. They put a little bit more time back in the clock, 16.3. 16.3 left to go. We'll see if Houston is toast or not. Or if they'll force overtime. And it goes to Kyle Filipowski in the rim. As it was halfway down. We'll send Shivers down his spine. Inbound. Sharp. Hands it off to Cryer. Cryer. Dribbles. Drives. Floats up the runner. Missed off the mark. No good. Tipped out of bounds. Last touched. Out of bounds by Duke with 8.9. It's going to stay Houston basketball. 8.9 seconds left to go. Missed floater. Inside a key, he was thinking about the two with LJ Cryer. Bodies, bodies, bodies flying all over the floor right there. You gotta hit a three here off the inbound if you're Houston. Gotta get something quick off the inbound and hit a three. 
Right now, referees are looking at the monitor in the last play. They're determining to make sure who last touched it out. Referees had it initially as it was out of bounds by Duke. Also looking at the time as well. 8.9 seconds left to go. Who last touched that? See a blue jersey. See how that's out of bounds by Duke. Mitchell and his teammate. I think that was Roach. Mitchell and Roach collided together going up for the rebound. So that is out of bounds by Duke. Mitchell swatted it out of bounds. It's going to stay Houston ball. There was Cryer from the backside. But yeah, that looks like it's out of bounds by Mitchell. Deflected out. Got to get something quick here off the inbound if you're Houston. Really, really quick. You got to go off the inbound. A floater missed off the glass by Cryer. And yeah, that looks like it's clearly out of bounds. Off of Duke. Mitchell. Yeah, that's tapped out by 25 Mitchell. 8.9. That's when the clock stopped. 8.9 seconds left to go. If you're new in the stream, what a game. Smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Type in the chat who you guys like to win this one here. Houston or Duke. Make sure to type it in. What a game. That is clearly out of bounds by Duke. Eight point nine seconds left to play. Should stay Houston basketball here with eight point nine. And here we go. Houston about to set up their offense. Eight point nine seconds remaining. Two guys that can shoot a three above 38% this season from the pro. There is LJ Cryer and Emmanuel Sharp. Got to give it to one of these guys here. They're just two for seven from three. Houston underneath their hoop about to inbound it. Looking to inbound and they will with Sharp. Sharp at the right wing. Seven seconds. Sharp dribbles up. Sharp step back. Three for the tie. Takes it off the front rim. No good. Battle for the rebound. Loose ball and out of bounds was Houston with point eight. Oh, that is crushing for the Cougars. Emmanuel Sharp missed off the front rim. Off the step back three over Proctor. Came off the rim. Short no good. With .8 seconds remaining. And then a loose ball tracked down in Houston. Could not stay in bounds with it. Duke by three. And Duke's going to take on NC State. The second one seed. About to go down in the tournament as this game goes final. Duke 54. Houston 51. The final score. Just not his night tonight for Sharp. John Shire leads his team to the Elite 8 to take on NC State. The 24th Elite 8 appearance in school history for the Duke Blue Devils. What a battle between these two teams tonight. Duke and NC State on Sunday in the Elite 8. To battle out to see who will make it to the Final Four. What a game. Thanks all for joining in here. And oh wow. Major, major matchup. Jeremy Roach, sensational tonight. Finished with 14 points. Major shot he made. Um, and the final two minutes left to go by Roach. Filipowski with 16-9 for points and rebounds. He was great from the perimeter. Three made threes tonight by Filipowski. Nothing bigger than the one he made with under six minutes left to go. 15 by LJ Cryer. Jawan Roberts finished with 13, but just crushing loss for Houston there. Star player, point guard Jamal, Jamal Shedd, injured midway through the first half. Uh, was seen exiting the locker room on a scooter. Prayers up to that young man. And just unfortunate for Houston that the injury bug once again in the tournament has hit them for another year. Duke's going to move on. Kyle Filipowski. And his team picks up a signature victory. They were looking for that signature win over a one seed in the field all year long. They got swept against UNC in the regular season. Lost against Arizona, a two seed team uh, back in November at Cameron Indoor. And they just picked up their best win all season long. And looking to see if they can get redemption on their in-state rival NC State in the Elite Eight on Sunday. 
Thanks all for joining in here. 54-51 the final scores. Duke wins over Houston. And we will wrap up to the channel members. All channel members get a shout out at the end of each and every single one of my live streams. We got Jason Vaughn, Rajiv, I am Ghost, David, Russell, John, Mark, Kelly, Jeffrey, Vegas, Oink, Oink, Michael, Katie, Bradley, Daniel, Derek, Sister Surround, Mario, Guido, Tristan, SG Sports Talk, Ice Ice Baby, Robin, Melinda, and Jack City. Thanks all for joining in, being on the stream for this game tonight as Duke. Wins over Houston in a defensive grind. 54-51 the final score. Duke's going to take on NC State in the Elite Eight on Sunday. Thanks for joining in, everybody. And enjoy the rest of your Friday nights.